How you doing? If an old lady came up to you today and asked what Instagram was, how would you answer? The average 40 year old might say that it's like Facebook, but with less minions maybe. A younger kid might say we only use TikTok now, old man. But if you ask me, I would say it's the most successful thief of all time, maybe like right behind the British Empire. June 2013, Instagram introduces video sharing. I, I, I wonder why. August 2016, Instagram introduces Instagram stories. They didn't even bother changing the name this time. August 2020, Instagram introduces reels. I really uh, can't, can't do this anymore. In many ways, the history of Instagram is a history of borrowing the main features in up and coming social media applications, then rebranding those features to make them friendlier and to fit the app's UI, and then releasing those features as Instagram's own. In many ways, Instagram is a record of the social media trends that we've seen throughout our lifetimes. And I think looking at it like that not only gives you a good idea of where Instagram once was, but also where social media as a whole is currently going in the future. And uh, I'll be honest, it, it's not looking too good. To me, it's looking like a future where the biggest social media companies seem to have lost sight of their original purpose, a future that favors a world where Social media is only meant to keep you addicted instead of feeling connected. This is the TikTokification of Instagram. Why social media feels less social now and the future. We live in an interesting time, man. If you know me, you've heard me say this next line in about 17 videos now, but I'll say it again because I want to see my face next to these words on a poster one day or maybe just like a Facebook post on your auntie's timeline. Me and you were the lab rats of the internet, the first generation to grow up with it. That has too many implications, but today we're obviously talking about how that relates to social media. If you clicked on this video, you've probably also noticed that through these years, social media has evolved a lot and uh, in a very particular way. This used to mostly be photo sharing apps, as they say. Now they're all just kind of mindless scrolling games. You know what? Put that on the poster instead. And you know, some people might say that social media was just always designed to be like that, to keep you addicted. And that's fair, really. But I think the way, especially the amount social media got you addicted, say in 2012 versus now in 2022 are night and day. Comparing that might be a good place to start. Before big tech companies were out here testing pixel by pixel the placement of buttons on their social media applications to see which one gives our baboon brains the biggest dopamine hit, before the comment section under any post was bot central, social media itself used to be a lot like uh, Bikini Bottom in that one caveman episode of Spongebob. <laughs> If you remember correctly, the only thing that kept you hooked to social media back in these prehistoric times was that very animalistic fear of missing out. And I guess waiting for your crush to poke you back on Facebook. There was explore or discovery pages that existed at the time, but nothing like the endless abyss of Twitter screenshots we see today. And I think that's where the biggest difference between old social media and new social media exists. Back then, I would say that you had your apps that were just meant for socializing you know, your BBMs or, or I guess kick if you've been through a lot. And then you had your apps where you wouldn't necessarily talk too much to others but where you would discover new things to share. Think Tumblr, Twitter, Reddit, YouTube. And then Facebook came along and said, OK, what if we had all of that? but in one place. Yeah, yeah, that's probably why Facebook proceeded to then be the biggest social media app in the world for the next decade. But in a world that was also moving more towards mobile development and this increasing sense that Facebook is for old people, another app slowly emerged. Our boy entered the Instagram age. Funny enough, Instagram is also owned by Facebook, but let's not talk about that. To this day, the way Instagram was able to put together simple feeds made up of the everyday lives of the people you wanted to know about, an entertaining catalog of outside content and things to learn about, and a messaging platform that you could use to share everything is impressive. It's the reason you've probably heard at least one person say that 2015 to 2017 was the golden age of the app. But me personally, I don't really like talking about Instagram like that because I feel like the greatest chunk of societal issues related to to social media addictions like influencer culture exploded in that time. When I look back at social media as a whole, and you might strongly disagree here, but this is still probably the point in time where I would personally go, yeah, this was the highest peak of the mountain so far. It's time for the fall off. <sighs> okay. <laughs> 
think talking about the eventual downfall of Instagram into what it is today involves talking about two very important parts. One, what Instagram actually is today, and two, talking about what the reason for this change was, which you should already know by now by the title of this video. Peter McKinnon made a video very recently on how Instagram is dead, and although it really doesn't look that way when you look at the numbers and consider how they're hard targeting my guys down there in India, I think what he mentions about the app's new algorithm now is still a perfect observation. I'm paraphrasing here, but he talks about how you could have worked on organically growing your Instagram page for the last decade, and suddenly none of that even matters. If you're not posting reels, the algorithm won't show your post. You could see how that's a problem for Peter McKinnon, a photographer that wants to grow mainly posting photos. But I think the bigger problem here in all of this is how it creates this new everyone is a content creator philosophy. Most people aren't textbook content creators, and if anything, they might just want to post among their friends. To echo the sentiment, I had one of my followers message me recently saying that it feels like they used to see their friends post all the time, and now it's mostly just pages they don't know because that's how the algorithm is built. Even on the homepage, which you know used to just be people you chose to follow, they started showing random content, mostly reels that they think you would like. And hearing that without the context of these changes might not sound like an actual issue to some people. In fact, it's great that you get to discover new things that you otherwise wouldn't have seen, right? You know, it's not like there was already an explore page for that. Or maybe from another point of view, you're asking yourself why Instagram is even bringing these changes. What happened to that slightly more friend oriented app that existed a few years back? Isn't doing all this going to get more people off of the app? Uh, may maybe a few people are going to stop going on Instagram, especially the ones that deeply care about those connections. But my harsh opinion on this is that it's actually going to get more people consistently on the app. This new model of social media, social media that only pushes out this fast pace, short form content, perfectly attuned to each person's individual liking through a powerful algorithm, isn't meant to make you feel more connected to stay on the app. It's meant to get you addicted so you stay instead, or, or at least all this is just my opinion. Don't sue me. So it's not showing you your friend's post because it doesn't want you to stay on the platform. It's not showing you your friend's post because it's clear by their algorithms that if it shows you this random bit of short form content that you seem to really like, according to what you've binged in the past instead, there's more chances that you keep scrolling. It knows you better than you know yourself. And that's where things get dangerously addicting. And for me, it's also easily the reason social media feels less social now. On these bigger platforms, our relationship with social media is no longer a relationship where an algorithm shows us content shared in these communities of people we selected. Our relationship with social media just involves us and whatever gets spit out by this algorithm that seems to know us on a near spiritual level. I could just think about something, man. The next thing I know, I see a video of it on my feed. The biggest problem with this again is that this expectation that we once had when coming on these apps was that we would feel more connected. That expectation is still being sold to us, yet in my opinion, again, the actual content being pushed on our screens is now more isolating instead, even if we might be able to relate to it more since it's more fine-tuned to our likings. How can you feel connected in a bubble after all? Case in point might be the emergence of the term chronically online or how more people seem to be getting stuck in echo chambers today and more dangerous pipelines. For the most part, these are lonely people in real life trying to find a sense of purpose or community. And these new social media algorithms might give these people that sense of community, but maybe without actually challenging the behaviors fueling their feelings of isolation in the first place, obviously making them feel more isolated in the long run. But anyways, what Instagram actually is today is clearly just an imitation of the fastest growing app in the last few years. Instagram's been TikTokified title drop. Instagram might have chosen algorithmic content over chronological content years before TikTok even came around, and the pandemic forcing us away from life might have accelerated this change, but TikTok's success was by far the biggest reason for the changes we see in Instagram today, just like how we've seen Instagram do with so many popular apps in the past. And TikTok's content model is where I see social media going in the future, considering how everyone's been trying to be TikTok, every social media app out there. We've seen something like this before with stories, but never to the scale where even non-social media applications like Netflix is introducing shorts now. What, what is going on? What's going on? That's what you call an influence. TikTok. 
TikTok. I have very uh, interesting feelings about this app, privacy and data policies aside. You know, before I deleted TikTok, I wasn't just on it scrolling. I was uh, making TikToks to scroll too. Fixing the problem is overdone, man. Be a part of it. Anime and manga commentary videos were my thing. And after that initial rush of likes and views faded away, I really sat down and realized Damn, this app is sneaky manipulative, and not just because it stopped giving me views. You know what? Maybe it's because of that. I was planning to make a video one day titled, I got 100k followers on TikTok, then deleted the app. Here's why, where I uh, flex one time, then talk about why TikTok is just one big finesse if you're an aspiring creator. And I probably will still make that video at some point, but for now, I can summarize some of it by saying that TikTok does a great job at making you feel like you're building towards a community, when in reality, you're really, really just another cog in the algorithm, more than any other social media app in the past which I'll get into. The algorithm rewards consistency and repetitive content. The second you move away from this a bit, a tiny bit, you know, take some time to breathe because you're burnt out or you're just trying to experiment creatively, it'll it'll drop you from the cycle and you're left wondering why you have over 100,000 followers yet only 2% of these people are seeing what you make. I'll link an article I really like on this topic below. But point is, consistency and overall staying in a niche is not very human, but it's important as a creator regardless of the platform you're on, at least if you want views. Except the difference between TikTok and these other platforms in the past is even if you decided that you didn't want to continue doing what the algorithm knew you for on these old platforms, it would still push out your content to the people that actively chose to follow you on some community-based type tab that existed wherever you posted. There on TikTok, you know, you got the two tabs. You got the For You or Discovery page that everyone knows and the community or page no one clicks on. That follow button does mean anything on TikTok and social media as a whole is following that trend as we talked about, which from a certain point of view is a good thing because it gives more opportunities for creators that are just starting out. But from another point of view, as a consumer of this product, it creates this illusion that you're in control of what you're seeing. And if the consumer isn't completely in control of what they're seeing, you can also see how as someone pushing out content on these platforms, the product, you no longer care if people decide to follow you because you know to actually get your work to them, you need to essentially be a, a content robot or someone that posts the most outlandish takes because everyone knows that always gets views. I had a guy on Twitter once say the following about my type of content and it got me happy and depressed all at the same time. He said, anyways, these videos are great. They're great, but they don't pop off because they aren't mindlessly consumable. The watch count isn't inflated and the shareability is low. Crying emoji. With the state of social media right now, these two metrics are going to dictate probably like 90% of the type of videos you're going to keep seeing, what we now call high engaging videos. But I think this comment under one of Pinely's videos perfectly explains why that's not really a good thing. When a video wants you to be engaged every second, no part Part of it stands out and it becomes boring. There are videos you feel nothing for, but that you can't seem to put down. This part of the video is probably going to be me at my most pessimistic, but man, I remember some of these things TikTok used to do just felt like they were trying to make it seem like there was actually that real community aspect on there. For example, moving the direct message page with all these people you know to where the notification page once was. So that's the first thing you see now. Look at all these faces of people you kind of know. What a nice community we have here, which is also kind of funny considering that I don't think anyone has ever had a real conversation in TikTok's the ebbs. It's just you and your friends, sorry, mutuals, sending each other your entire For You page. Another thing I found really interesting that I see no one talk about is the character limit for TikTok's combats. You don't dab well. These guys down there at TikTok have the engineers and resources to update that with like a higher character limit. But why would they? Why would they? Reading and typing out longer comments would slow you down from going to the next short video and keeping that mindless scrolling loop going. But but I think I got everything negative out of my system now. And I think we've also reached the point where we can both see why the TikTokification of social media is leading to it feeling less social, if not just empty. Now, what can me and you actually do about all of this? Take down TikTok. Yeah. Nah, nah, I'm playing. Unless... 
At the end of the day, I truly believe that it's up to us as end users to make that conscious decision on what we consume. And we can just hope that that'll bring actual change in the social media space in the future. I really don't trust these social media companies to ever put health over profit unless health, you know, somehow becomes a profit, which I think also summarizes the American system. But I can see a future where policymakers have social media in mind. In fact, I think it's already started, but realistically speaking, it still sounds kind of backwards, at least right now in the year 2022, to want to limit how these social media companies curate content on their platforms, aside from the extreme stuff. Bringing awareness to how social media is affecting us in general would definitely help as well, especially when it comes to the younger generation. But most importantly, maybe as this new digital society, I think we just need to get better, much better at taking care of our attention spans. It's the first time in history where we actually have the tools to bombard you with nonstop information. And it's no secret that these social media companies are abusing that. And you can hear me talk about that a whole lot more in my video on why I deleted TikTok. But point is, at some point, a few hours into your mindless scroll, for those few seconds where you realize where those hours have gone by, you got to train yourself to stay present and get out instead of jumping back in. Kind of like how you keep refocusing back on reality after getting lost in thoughts when meditating, if you meditate. At some point, you end up being able to stay present for much longer. Life is easy easily too beautiful to spend most of it looking at what life could be. And that's also kind of a hard realization to have because when everyone has 12 hour screen time, no one has 12 hour screen time. And it's harder to find those people that also value life over what's perfectly curated, but also live by you can only change the world by helping yourself or however that saying goes. The reason I've been cutting YouTube some slack here as a platform is because one, I'm literally posting this video on their platform. And two, although YouTube is also trying to get into the short content game, and they got a huge hyper editing problem, which I did mention, the longer videos are still YouTube's main selling point. So to ease yourself back into a somewhat normal attention span, I think this is still a good app to keep. You know, if you go cold turkey off social media, then try to have enough attention to pick up like a book, for example, I promise you, you'll just go back to social media again. What I see some people also doing to break free from what social media has become is a... Uh, post photo dumps or, or I'm just out here only posting on my close friend story. And I guess there are people who are just uninstalling Instagram completely and these other social media apps and going to apps resembling more how traditional social media used to look like. Peter McKinnon mentioned Vero. Vero, I already forgot how to pronounce it. I've seen some of my friends on this app called Be Real. And although I think all of that is great, I still think the best remedy to the state of social media right now is just moderating it for yourself. You're the parent and kid now. Good luck. People tell you to uninstall completely might have your best interest in mind, but I think they're also forgetting how useful of a tool social media can be as well. You could 100%, 100% get everything you get from social media, information, conversations, and everything in between elsewhere in a much richer format, but it's just so much more convenient to get on social media, at least when social media is being used as a starting point. A starting point. Social media is designed to be addicting, but that doesn't mean that it has to be when you using it. I like to say use social media not to create yourself, but to add to the life you're already living. That was obvious, very obvious 10 years ago, much less now and much easier said than done, you know, but I'm saying all of this because I truly believe that this dystopian outlook that many people have when it comes to the future alongside the use of social media is as pessimistic as it gets. More pessimistic than me talking about my best buddy TikTok. Is there someone or something you really want to learn about? Use social media as that starting point and see if you can start building that into something that manifests in your real life. Is there something really cool you want to remember? Post it and let others be inspired as well. In everything we do, I think we're all just looking to feel like we weren't the last. Once more people start remembering that, I'm sure we'll laugh at how we endlessly scrolled on autopilot at the start of the 21st century. How we forgot that connections don't come from an app trying to addict you to your own loneliness for ad revenue. Being humans, I would like to believe that it's only then that we got back to building a more beautiful future, a better social media, something we kept building on together. This is actually my first video or YouTube video where I talked about something besides anime and manga. So if you enjoyed, help me out and share with a friend or something. All right? Peace out. As always, I'll see you in the next one. This has been Thoughts from Shivam.